Have you ever been in a situation like this where you have no idea how to get back up alone? Well, let me tell you, the Apple Watch can be a very helpful tool in such situations, usually. Hi, it's Melisa and today I wanted to talk to you about the Apple Watch and about how people in wheelchairs can benefit from it. I am aware that the Apple Watch can be used as a tool for many physical disabilities, ranging from blindness to amputation, but I actually wanted to focus on the benefits that it gives to people in wheelchairs and generally with limited walking capabilities, since it's the situation that I am in. So if you just got started and want to set up the watch with the wheelchair mode, there are just a few very simple steps to follow. So first off, you have to open the health tab. Then on the right upper corner, there you have your profile, you click on it. Then you go under health details. And if you scroll down, you will see wheelchair and by default it's set to no. But if you click on edit on the right upper corner, you can change it to yes or no. And once you know the location, it's actually also very easy to just change in between these two, which I do, for example, whenever I use the wheelchair, I know wheelchair mode, otherwise I uh, prefer to use just a normal mode. The Apple Watch is equipped with fitness algorithms and sensors that are specifically designed to track the activity of wheelchair users in a very accurate way. So that's at least according to the Apple webpage, but you must know if wheelchair user or not these here are still just estimates, but they give you like a very good overview over your whole health situation. So I guess that's good. There are three activity rings. The first one is the move ring, which counts your active calories. So it basically counts the calories that you burn while you're just moving a little bit during the day, you know, walking a little bit, doing whatever you're doing. The second one is the activity ring, which counts your active minutes. So the minutes when you're moving and you put a lot more effort into it. Uh, these are also counted while you're doing a workout, if you start one on your Apple Watch. And the last one is the standing ring, which is make sure that during an hour you move for at least one minute, because it's not very healthy to just sit the whole time. That led to a wheelchair user, yes. <laughs> This is why movement is important for everyone. Anyway, so when a wheelchair modus is activated, your watch will track pushes instead of steps and the stand ring will turn into a roll ring. So to make an example, let's say from 8 a.m. until 8.50 a.m. you do not move. At that point, you will get a notification on your watch that tells you it's time to roll. So you basically just have to roll around for a minute and that's about it, then it's happy. Then you close it a little bit further. Anyway, beside the point, very beside the point. If you want to fake it, that it closes, like you're sitting and oh, I don't wanna stand up, what can you do? If you're a normal person and you have the normal mode activated, you just have to make sure that the crown is facing down for a minute. If you're wearing it like traditionally, like I am. If you're in a wheelchair, that's not possible, like you really, you have to push. And even if I'm just here fake pushing, it won't work. Oh, it takes so much time. <laughs> so as a wheelchair user, there's no faking. If you are a manual wheelchair user, there are two workouts made just for the wheelchair. We have the outdoor wheelchair walking piece and outdoor wheelchair running piece. And you just have to choose the one that fits your activity best but once you started the activity you can also switch it up like if you started off by putting a lot of effort into it if you want to slow down at some point there's no issue also like the contrary if you started very slowly and chose for example walking piece but then you see hey i want to do more you can do it no issue at all and it will actually track your pushes besides that it will also measure the time, the piece, the distance, uh, the calories, and the heart rate. So the Apple web page actually suggests that if you do other activities like hand cycling or wheelchair basketball, which are not optimized on the watch, you should choose the workout other. The thing is that obviously we have, for example, cycling and basketball, but they are literally optimized for people that are using their body in the traditional way and this can like lead to counting your calories or your statistics in general wrongly and interpreting them not in the right way. I for example also started a 
walking workout while I was in the wheelchair because obviously I was walking a lot and just walking 100 meters I was dying it was right after my surgery but as soon as I started to work out it told me hey Lisa you can go on with this but please remember that it might be off like uh, whatever is the outcome of it it's not as accurate as maybe for someone else do you remember how I was on the floor at the beginning of the video well let me show you how it came to that work? Yes. This one planned. <laughs> Ouch. Well, good news. The Apple Watch can be very helpful in exactly a situation like that. Let's assume that you fell to the floor and you're now there, not moving. After approximately a minute, the Apple Watch will start a 30 seconds countdown and during the countdown it will do two things. The first one is it will constantly tap on your wrist and the second one is that an alarm will play. So the sound of the alarm will not be too loud in the beginning but then the sound level will increase over time. And what the watch tries to do in this case is first off to check if you're cautious and the second thing is it will alert people around you. If you are cautious or if there is someone around you who has the situation under control, then you can simply tap on cancel. Otherwise, if there is nobody, if you're unconscious or if you still decide that you need help, then you just let the countdown finish and then the Apple Watch will automatically call emergency services. So when the call connects, the Apple Watch plays an audio message that states that the Apple Watch detected a heart fall and it will also share your location by giving them your longitude and latitude coordinates. The first time the message plays, the audio is at full volume, but then after that it will be reduced such that you or someone that's nearby can actually talk to the responder. And the call will only end when one of the two parties hangs up. As of yesterday, the Apple Watch detected each and every one of my falls. So whenever I am in my wheelchair, falling to the back, it does that. Or also with my crutches, where it is more of a plant falling. So obviously when I fall with a wheelchair, then it's already too late, I'm falling, there's nothing I can do. But when I am with my crutches, then I start falling and I know, okay, bye bye, I'm falling now. But at the same time, I can also think about how can I make my fall a little bit softer. And I usually just end up falling soft and my Apple Watch is still able to detect it as a fall. Today, what happened today? So I didn't just fell to the back but I also fell like over myself somehow and then I was immediately moving so the watch being smart as it is <laughs> obviously knew that there was um, no real harm done and I assume that this is why like the alarm didn't go off because usually as soon as I just hit the floor I never even experienced this one minute of break in between where it detects if you're moving or not it usually immediately like the alarm played and it says oh you fell <laughs> so I guess this is just a coincidence I hope so I mean I'm well <laughs> I should try to just stay on the floor and see what it does then I won't do that because this is it's not a nice feeling. In order for automatically call emergency services, the wrist detection has to be turned on. And this can actually be done very easily from your watch. You just have to access settings, uh, then passcode, and from there if you scroll down you will find wrist detection. Just switch it on. For the walkers here, hi! Did you know that the Apple Watch is also like a feature called walking asymmetry and it basically shows you in a percentage how symmetric your walk is. Like if you're a healthy young person you won't have any trouble but what if you hurt yourself and the pain is persistent? What if you're an elderly person? What if you're disabled? Then maybe mm, it could be that your walking style is not the best one. And I find that this little feature here is very helpful for me to keep an eye on how I walk because maybe I don't even notice that I'm walking wrongly. But then the Apple Watch tells me, hey Lisa, pay attention, you're not walking very right. And it also alerts you that it might happen in the next time that you fall. Okay, it tells you if you go on like this, the chances that you fall are way higher. And I really like it because I can see, hey, am I improving? Is it getting worse? And if it is getting worse, then I know that I can like just 
actively walk better. I just have to think about Lisa, walk better and I will do it. It's just that usually you think about other stuff while walking, right? Besides these specific advantages, there are also some minor ones which some people might oversee because they are very obvious ones, but they are really changing my life to the better and so I also wanted to share them with you. So first off is, let's imagine I'm walking somewhere with my crutches and I get a notification. I have to stop, I have to somehow figure out how to hold two crutches in one hand, I have to look for my phone, I have to take it out just to find an annoying notification from a WhatsApp group nobody cares about. <laughs> I care about everyone, okay? But just hear me out. You do this whole process just to see one useless notification and what if you have to do this all the time? That's not very efficient, right? So the Apple Watch allows you to just have one little glance at it and you immediately know, is it important? Is it not? Do I have to like stop and really take out my phone because I have to do something, I have to call someone or can this wait? Obviously this can be done with all other smartwatches as well, but I just wanted to point it out. The second thing is paying. Again, imagine I'm in a shop, I uh, wanted to buy some items and then once again I have to figure out how to hold two crutches in one hand, I have to take out my wallet, the cash, the cards, whatever, if I'm lucky, the phone and just paying with Apple Pay. But again, I always have to like take out stuff of my purse, of my jacket, whatever. And in this case here again, little double click, putting on the counter and it's done. The payment transaction is over. Again, this can also be done on many different smartwatches. If you want to do Apple Pay specifically, it has to be an Apple device, otherwise Google Pay, Samsung Pay, whatever. So many things. It's just something that makes your life so much easier. You really don't have to think about it. The only downside to this can be that sometimes, I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, then sometimes the counters can be very high. So you somehow have to figure out how to hold the watch and sometimes it's even impossible. So in that case, I just like to take the phone and pay with the phone. And the last and definitely most important point is that the Apple Watch is the only smart health fitness watch, whatever you want to call it, that has the wheelchair mode. No other watch out there has such a mode and every other watch is therefore not as accurate as the Apple Watch. For you people out there in a wheelchair. Okay, the Apple Watch video ends here. Thank you so much for being here. You can now go, except if you want to hear me rant about Fitbit, because I have a lot to say. No, not a lot, just some things. So if you're interested, keep watching. Otherwise, thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you again next time. So, Fitbit. My very first smartwatch was a Pebble, which I got from my dad. It was a huge surprise. I never expected to get it. The company was then bought by Fitbit and I, I broke my Pebble, so I switched and I got a Fitbit. And I actually had a few of them, but over all the months that I had Fitbits, I was able to get one one single active minute and I'm working out, I'm doing my things, like I'm also moving a lot, especially then, like I was moving way more than just now, but it didn't count a single, act well, one, just one active minute. And I think that this is because it counts your active minutes when you are doing a lot of movement, like uh, above average and your heart rate is high as well. And obviously when I'm doing movement, then it's literally below the average of a normal person. But still, like, my heart rate was always so high and it still didn't, didn't detect them as active minutes. And that's very frustrating because I'm doing a lot, I'm doing my workouts. I even started workouts on my watch. I had the um, Fitbit Sense. I started the workouts on the watch and still no active minutes. I then also contacted Fitbit and asked them, hey, did you ever consider, like, uh, people with limited capabilities? They answered me and they said no. <laughs> And they also said they will probably not consider it in the future. Like, as it is now, they won't consider it, so... Okay. And by the way, if you have an iPhone, Fitbit doesn't work well with the iPhone. And now they have some sort of subscription thing going on, so... No, just stick to the Apple Watch. You're on the safe side. <laughs> anyway, this is the end of uh, my video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Now with the new models like the Apple Watch Series 8, the iPhone 14, there is also the crash detection. So there's a lot going on to keep you safe and to just facilitate your life on a daily basis. I really hope that you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again next time. 
Thank you so much for being here. Bye bye. Fun fact, uh, oops. When I had my accident afterwards, like, <sighs> I had to learn how to get up from these situations here, but I wouldn't know how to run because I can cheat. Should we still give it a try? <laughs> Yes, yes, it works. No, I'm afraid. No, no, no. Whoa! Let's cheat. <laughs> you should see how dirty everything is in here. It's all green. It's full of grass. If somebody asks, not my fault. <laughs> Hey, 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 guess what? I didn't even want to fall like this. I thought, okay, I will just place my wheelchair in that position and just sit there somehow. But sometimes, because I'm very afraid of many different situations, also like walking down um, stairs that have tiles when they're wet, sometimes I just tell to myself, Lisa, just do it, such that, you know, I don't have the time to be afraid. I just do it before I can even think about it. And I think that was exactly what I did there. Bye.